Welcome to Using Cisco Unified Intelligence Center, CUIC. This video on users, groups and permissions is one in a multi-part series introducing CUIC 11.5. In this video we will cover the administration of CUIC users, groups and permissions. Make sure you check out the other videos in this series which are going to include customizing report views, permalinks, using dashboards, and value lists and collections. Looking first at users, we find that there are two user types associated with COIC, these being the report users and the administrators. Report users are responsible for the day-to-day -day business as usual activities such as creating or running reports, dashboards, value lists and collections. These users will authenticate during login via LDAP. Administrators, on the other hand, are responsible for system administration. Depending on the roles and permissions assigned to an administrator, they can also, of course, run reports and create custom reports, etc. These users will authenticate locally uh, in COIC. Access is determined by roles and permissions for these users, except for the default COIC super user who is installed at deployment. User roles are assigned to users to control what drawers the user can access, what objects the user can create, and what data is available when launching a report. User roles include the dashboard designer, the value list collection designer, report designer, report definition designer, the security administrator, and the system configuration administrator. Note that while roles are required to allow users access to a particular drawer, Permissions determine the level of access to individual content. Three levels of permissions are assigned. Full access, where users can perform all functions. Partial access, where a user is limited to running or viewing the report only. And no access, where a user will not see any object or on that list of reports, for example. Note that for access to a particular report, a user must be assigned not only permissions for that report, but also any folders on the tree leading up uh, to the root folder. As you can see here, there is only one set of circumstances where a user can actually view a report. User groups allow security administrators to divide the COIC functionality. They can group multiple users together that need the same access to dashboards and reports. We'll note that there are two default user groups at install. One, the all users group and the system administrator group. By default, all users are made members of the all users group and a user cannot be removed from that all users group. When considering groups and subgroups, we should also note that inheritance is in one direction only. In this slide, we see Sales North, Sales Central, and Sales South with assigned permissions B, C, and D. The Sales group, which is the parent group of these North, Central, and South, inherits those permissions B, C, and D. But the assigned permission, permission A, assigned to the Central Sales group, uh, is not inherited by any of these subgroups. Let's now take a moment uh, and look at COIC 11.5 and how we might create and use these groups. Here we have the COIC 11.5 homepage logged in as the COIC administrator. I'm going to spend just a moment showing you what reports and subfolders we've created for the purposes of this demonstration. So let's just go to the reports folder where we'll see both the stock reports, which are there by default, and a, uh, a created sales folder. Within that sales folder, there are two subfolders, Sales South and Sales North. And in each of these, Sales South, there is a particular sales report. Let's go back and look at Sales North. And notice also that there is a sales report associated with that sales central or um, sales folder. Okay, so let's now go and see how we might create groups in order to define access to each of these folders and reports. For that, we'll need to go to the users 
link. Clicking on the user link brings up the legacy COIC screen and allows us access to the security drawer where we see the user list, user groups and user permissions. Let's go to user groups and create our groups. Click create. And I'll first create a sales central group and I'll spell sales correctly. I'll create the sales south group. and a sales north group. Now in order to make the sales north and sales south groups subgroups of the sales central group, we'll go back to the sales central and click edit. And we'll click the groups tab and assign sales north and sales south to the sales central group. We are required at this point to select at one of those groups as the default group. So let's just pick sales north and click save. So now we have our three groups, sales north, sales central and sales south. Note in the full name of Sales Central, the default group is also defined. We now want to create permissions uh, for the, each of those groups and memberships of those groups to our users. Let's start with the memberships. Uh, and for that, we'll go to User Permissions. And we'll select here are our reports and click firstly on our sales folder. And here we're going to want to create uh, permissions for all three groups, the, the sales central group, sales north and sales south. So let's do that in turn. Firstly, sales north. Sales Central and we'll give Sales Central actually execute and write permissions and Sales South will have execute only. So for this folder this uh, high level sales folder or top level sales folder, we've got execute permissions to sales north group, sales south group, and execute and write permissions to the sales central group. We should probably look also at the sales report itself and set those permissions. This time just to sales central. both execute and write. So now let's look at assigning permissions to the sales south. Sales south, we want to assign permissions only to the sales south group. We'll give the sales south people full rights to the folder and the contents. And then finally, the sales north. I 
from the Sales North report. And so now we've assigned our group MIP permissions to these sample reports. Leaves us only now to allocate groups to those individual users. And for that, we'll go to our user list. Here in our user list, we'll now, we'll now pick our users. And for convenience, I've just created users with the same names as the groups. So our sales central user will be assigned to the group sales central. And in doing that, we'll now make his default group, not all users, but sales central. We'll do the same with sales north user. And assign this guy to the sales north group. And finally, the Sales South user. So we've now assigned groups. We've now assigned permissions to those groups and we've assigned users to those groups. Let's go back to our reports page and see the effect that this might have. Let me first sign in as Sales Central. Remember, the authentication is via LDAP. Look at the sales report here, and you'll see that in fact I do have access not only to the sales folder, but sales south and sales north, and we can verify that yes, in fact, we do see the sales south and sales north report. Note that these permissions have been inherited. Now let's look at what might happen if we log in as the sales south or sales north. Here we are logged in as sales north. I'll click on reports and yes we can still see the sales folder and the sales north subfolder and sales north report but we do not see anything to do with sales south which is in accordance with the groups and permissions that we created earlier. Let's now go back and log in as sales south and confirm the same for that guy. So we're now at the home page for Sales South. Click on Reports. And yes, we can still see the Sales folder, but now only the Sales South folder and Sales South report. So hopefully that gives you some idea of the use of users, groups and permissions and the ability to segment access to your particular reports based on your business requirements. Thanks for watching and be sure to check out other videos in this series.